Hi everyone, and welcome to our show, Discovering Laguna Woods Village. I'm Cindy Whitney, and today we're going to be discovering two resources that are very important for every resident to know more about. We'll be visiting the wonderful Laguna Woods Village Library and its next door neighbor, the History Center. On our tour of the library, we're going to be highlighting the many informative resources and materials that are available to you. For example, you might want to check out a series of audio tapes and learn a new language. Or you might want to sit in the bright open spaces and passionately discuss the latest book club read. Or you may just want to tuck yourself away in a corner and work on a fabulous puzzle. In the History Center, we're going to learn more about this little village that we all now call our home. There's a lot to learn about today. It's all about learning. Let's go get started, shall we? Hi, now we're in the History Center and we're going to be speaking with Dean Dixon, who is the CEO of the History Center. Dean, when I was in here a while ago, you characterized the role of the History Center as a story keeper. Could you elaborate a little bit on that, please? Oh, well, there's a wonderful Waldo Emerson quotation that says that uh, there rightfully is no history, I'm going to paraphrase, rightly no history but only biography and to the extent that people's lives have influenced this community and changed it in terms of its history, uh, we keep those stories so that we have uh, the context for people that are here now. And so people can come in here and basically learn more about this small town because one of the things that we know is that the thing that we have in common here is none of us is from Laguna Woods. That's and right. so to learn collectively about our small town, this is the place to do it. This is the place to do it and we would encourage people, particularly the newer people, uh, as they're trying to put down roots and identify who, where they, who they are within this community, uh, that uh, finding a local history uh, that they can identify with will help that process. And is it fair to say that to learn about the vision of Ross Cortezi and to, to understand what he and his colleagues were planning uh, for this community, is it fair to say that that helps us think about it going forward into the future? Absolutely. Uh, the visionary aspect of everything uh, in the community, which begins with Cortese's uh, studies that were done by the University of Southern California, um, are, are not only part of this, but the visionary aspect of even having a history center and doing the kinds of things that we do here to preserve that history. So, Lee, tell me, what is digitizing? What does that involve? It involves putting the Globe newspaper, which is goes back from, oh, 1950 to 2016 into the computer. So if someday you want to look at, say, April 1996 issue, you'll be able to look at that issue and see, and we're into 1996 now. Oh my goodness, you've done all of that work We've so far? We've done a lot. We've worked sometimes about two hours, and in that two hours we can only do about uh, four months, four issues, uh, four month issues, yeah. In 1977 this all came together as a requirement to do something with an archive. So our mission here is, uh, as a charity, we, we uh, are trying to maintain the information that uh, people will be coming to look for in perpetuity. So. If I'm a new resident here, for example, and I've walked past this building, um, and I'm thinking, well, I'd like to go in because I know there's this really great diorama uh, that shows everybody's home right. and shows the layout and the topographical map of the community. Right. What other reason would I have to come in here? Well, the uh, printed information that we have available, which is, which is all free, uh, we, we are not taking out, out of anybody's uh, homeowners uh, monthly. Uh, this is all done by donation. Because we are not a GRF facility, we do not get funding except for a small stipend to help us with some of the electronics, which has been great, and we appreciate that. But everything that's been done has been done by volunteer labor and volunteer funding. So um, our goal is to keep the doors open and the lights on, and that means 
that this wonderful building that was actually built by the History Center at that point, the Historical Society, was um, money that was donated. So the building is actually a single building. We look like we're attached to the library, but we are a separate building. And all the renovation that was done this last year um, was through fundraising and people donating, individuals donating as well as companies. What do you think is the real essence of the History Center to Laguna Woods Village? What's the most important feature, do you think? Um, I think it's a personal diary in a way of where we live and everybody is looking for something a little bit different out of the diary but there's a lot of information um, that's compiled. Uh, we have people that come in all the time and ask their, when their parents lived here what was going on. Well this is the place to find out and uh, it's amazing how many are second and third generation coming into the community but I think we are just a composite, a place for people that can come do research. Also, we have an excellent website, which I think Dean mentioned. And um, there's a lot of information and YouTube videos and things that you can get from your home on your, you know, on your own leisure. Or you can come in and get some help and assistance in researching. But it's just a little gem of a thing here in this community. I don't know of any other community that has its own little history center. It's usually something that you see in a larger city Correct. with a historical society and so forth, but this is, uh, this is really quite important because of that. And you mentioned that people come in here and they, they look at the information that's there as a personal diary, but they also leave information too, don't they? Correct. We have a lot of people that have left things. We go through them. A lot of things that come in aren't necessarily relevant to Laguna Woods. There are histories from families, but our other job is that we are not just History Center here. We are connected to all the other history organizations. So information that comes to us that is more relevant somewhere else, we contact them and make sure that information. We've had archives uh, from a Broadway director. We've had family archives. We've had things that have come in that are better suited to another area and they were very welcome and that's part of what we do to extend ourselves beyond the community. We also have a history that has been done that's the 400 years prior to uh, the coming of Leisure World. Uh, it was the Leisure World archive that created the organization but uh, local history is locale history and what we're trying to do is uh, provide some basis for uh, understanding how we even got to the point of uh, Ross Cortese buying land from the Molden Ranch. So it really takes us through all of that history. Right. And, you, and you also have captured some written and some oral histories that I know are on your website. Right. And so that's helpful to, in someone's first person experience, they're talking about what it was like when they lived here. Right. Those are very well, interesting. And, and they, and, uh, we can all relate to them because we have our own story that maybe should be there too. Uh, but uh, we have actually two phases to our oral histories. Uh, we uh, helped the Library of Congress for a period of time picking up uh, veterans histories uh, and just in the past year have gone to doing oral histories of the community, people that have lived here and have uh, some longevity and have watched their own uh, piece of history evolve over that time. Yes, and the, the changes in the community, the changes in the leadership, and all those things help us when we're making decisions about how to go forward. Well, from a governance standpoint, those documents are all here too, so yes, absolutely. Next year is going to be our 40th anniversary. It's also 20th year from this building being built, and um, so we're going to be doing some activities and get some information out and probably have a really good anniversary party come around October. So looking forward to planning that. Wow, we're going to put that on our calendar. That That's sounds great. like a good time. Yeah. I, I really appreciate you sharing your time with us today and giving us all of this wonderful information about the History Center. Yeah. We thank you so much for your well, time. Well, it's our great joy to have you here. Thank you. Our HydroWorks underwater treadmill has been proven to enhance mobility, improve flexibility, and strengthen muscles without the stressful joint impact you normally experience on land. Our warm water HydroWorks pool provides an environment that improves cardiovascular stamina and increases healing and the strengthening of tissues. Patients using our HydroWorks pool report a wider range of motion, better stability, and greater independence. So if you want to gain confidence and improve your quality of life, 
Call HQ Unlimited's Aliso Viejo office today. Christine and Jack for the Jewelry Box. Hey Christine, who's the biggest buyer of jewelry, diamonds, gold, and watches in Orange County? Why we are, Jack. And who sells more previously enjoyed jewelry than anyone around? We do. And who has a graduate gemologist and a full shop with a master watchmaker, two jewelers, and a laser welder? Uh, we do. And who's been voted best jewelry store in Orange County the last five years in a row? That would be us, the Jewelry Box of Lake Forest. The Jewelry Box, it is about trust. Now we're talking with Pat Hedrick, who is the president of the Laguna Woods Village Library. Pat, you shared with me at one time that the, the library has actually been designed for the community, for the residents of Laguna Woods Village. What did you mean by that? Well, we're sitting in one of the things that we designed purposely so people would come in and relax, read magazines, maybe a book, sometimes take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, a couple other items that we have, we have a really large, large print section for people who are visually impaired and these books get worn out really fast, be really popular with the seniors who are having trouble with their vision and uh, we do order as many books as possible uh, that are available in new books and we do replace old ones, mostly with paperbacks unbelievably in large print. The other thing is we have a magnifier here for people who have really lost their vision so they can come in and use that. And I know many people who have bad vision have purchased those for at home, but if you haven't purchased one, it's here available free in the library for you. That's wonderful because I imagine a lot of people have legal documents or medical documents or things that they just... Absolutely. If you're like, I'm trying to refill prescriptions yesterday, can I read the print on there? What day did I refill this before? I've had a hard time focusing on it. And rather than make a mistake, which could be costly, come in and check out the magnifier and, and you can read everything you need to read. Absolutely. And there's somebody here who will help you get set up if you're not familiar with it. So, yeah, it's a good service for people. So Pat, tell me about puzzles. It seems to be a really popular thing here. People are coming in and, and putting together puzzles. How, how do you go about doing that if you're a resident? Well, if you're a resident, you come in and you see a puzzle that you'd like to just jump in and work with the other people that are working on it, feel free. They welcome you. But if you want to do a puzzle just on your own, pick it up and take it home. Or you could start it here, but somebody's liable to jump in and play with you too. <laughs> sure, so it's like group puzzling and individual puzzling. I think that it's, there's nothing more relaxing than sitting and putting a puzzle together. And very good for your brain. Very good, very challenging. Some of them are very challenging. So tell me about some of the other things you have. I know you have um, audio tapes and you have video tapes and you have CDs and DVDs. All of this... You know, we have me. an enormous DVD section. Wow. We have about 34 to 3500 DVDs available. You can go online and check out our catalog for just DVDs um, and search it. We even have West Wing, which was very popular several years ago. We have lots of mysteries, really good things. And uh, then we do have books on CD, which are really popular when you're traveling. Or if you have to be in traffic every day, this will save your sanity. Yes. <laughs> Listening to a story rather than futzing with the traffic. Absolutely. It's very relaxing. So, And we do still have some books on tape, yes. but we're sort of weeding them out. Most people have uh, DVD or CD players, so... Um, tell me something we don't know about this library. Historically, the library was started in a small room in like 1969 and it has grown to be with 26,000 cataloged items, uh, 
and we were remodeled about four years ago, so it's totally changed in here. If you haven't been in our library in a long time, you need to come in and see what it looks like. It is <laughs> delightful. It is delightful. <laughs> and you know, I'm looking at a magazine shelf on the other side of the room, and I'm seeing current magazines that were just published, and they're in here already. That's really great. I mean, th th some of those magazines are very expensive. Yes, and we have over 30 magazines. And if you have a request for something that we don't have on the shelf that would be of interest to other people here in the village, we will order it and put it on the shelf for you. Our, some people have donated a subscription to magazines, which has been really, really beneficial. One lady got us started with a large print reader's digest magazine about three years ago, and we've continued it because people love Reader's Digest. They just enjoy something brief and good stories and that type of thing. So the magazines are wonderful for people. And most of the people who you'll find sitting in the chairs or at the table are reading magazines. <laughs> yes, sure. Well, what a perfect place to do it. Now, bestsellers. You, uh, do you get those in in advance of maybe them? As soon as they're available, we've got them. Wow. So if they're going to be on the shelf at the bookstore yes. today, we'll probably have it three days after that. That's great. So the um, suppliers of books have held back book sell bestsellers to give the bookstores a chance sure. to be able to sell them sell. first. But the libraries will have the library will have it right away. And we do have a special shelf for new books that have just come in, right, right in the front of the library. Um, you can check that out. There will be some things, new authors that you've never heard of. Yes. Sometimes it's fun to read a new author and see what's going on in the sure. world. Sure. <laughs> so, I, I have to ask you, what what's the most popular genre of book here? What what do people? What are they most likely? Mysteries. Mm Mysteries. Okay. Oh yeah and they grab those up right away. And all the popular authors that yes. write mysteries, people love them. So yes. anyone from J.D. Robb, which as everybody knows is really Nora Roberts in disguise yes. as a <laughs> mystery writer, <Yes. laughs> um, to Grisham, yeah. uh, Kessler, everyone mm -hmm. loves all the mysteries. So, um, and women tend to like softer stories, you know, Debbie May Comer and uh, they like Nora Roberts and George Danielle Steele. Women tend to look for those books a lot. Well, I must be different because I like Lee Child and my Jack Reacher novels. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Lee Child is also very, very popular. As soon as his new books come out, man, people are requesting them and there'll be a waiting list. <laughs> so. Well, that's great. That's exciting. And you have book clubs that meet here. Well, we have three book clubs that meet here in the evening, once a month. No drinks allowed no food <laughs> so that relieves you of entertaining at home I think that's a big <laughs> big point with people they don't want to entertain 12 people at home and talk about books at the house so we have it here in the library and it's been very successful um, of course we'd like to expand it like I think it'd be a great idea to have a mystery book club and uh, really get good insight, all kinds of education levels, all people from all over the world. <laughs> so it's really a fun book club and you didn't have to invite just your friends to come in. So that's a nice thing. You make friends at the book club. I think so. And I think the couple of book clubs that I've joined in the past, it's so nice. The book becomes much more alive as an experience rather than just reading it yourself you exactly. get other people's perspectives and they saw something differently that you didn't see it's one it's a wonderful experience so i'm glad that you have those mm -hmm. uh, i have to ask you too suppose somebody was planning a trip they were going to be traveling somewhere what resources do you have for someone who is intending to travel in the future well we have a great travel section in the dvds and we have travel books for almost every country so they're available here. So you want to come in and get the DVD and the books. Right. <laughs> and I know a lot of people read some fiction maybe that has to do with the area they're going to. Good idea, I think. So your preparation for travel is really layered. Mm -hmm. You can pick up a little bit of the conversational language that's going to be uh, spoken wherever you're going. And yeah, and we do that. have some foreign language uh, DVDs and CD books. So. Those are helpful to people too, so you at least can say please, thank you, and uh, 
north, south, east, and west are always a good things to know when you go to another Where's country. Where's the restroom? <laughs> yes, Sorry. I can do the restroom in Chinese and Spanish. <laughs> now, another great thing about coming here is I understand you have free Wi-Fi. Oh, Yay. absolutely. Absolutely. The Wi-Fi is a big hit for people who don't have Wi-Fi at home. And so people come in and use the Wi-Fi often. We'll find two or three people with their computers or their iPads in here working on using the Wi-Fi. So it's very convenient. And there's Wi-Fi all over the village, but this is just a nice environment. If people want to study for a class, they can get online here and look up things. And it's pretty quiet usually. So. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, in that respect, in many respects, it's a regular functioning library. Yes, it is. And the thing, the nice thing here is we have people at the front desk who can help you. If you don't know how to look up on our catalog, people still, where's the card catalog? Well, card catalogs died a long time ago, and everything is on the computer. And the computer is really nice because it's very visual. It gives you a summary of what the book is about or the movie is about. Or you can put in a movie star's name and it'll bring up all the movies that we have that the movie star is in. Wow, wow that makes it really interesting for people. Comprehensive. Can you do any of the uh, searches from home? Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah, And I talk about that whenever I'm on uh, this day all the time. Just go to lagunawoods.bibliotics dot com and it'll bring up our total total catalog and you can search through there so but it's if you don't know how to search it's nice to come into the library and have somebody show you how to do that yes, yes, and it makes it really it's really easy and it is self-explanatory but if you're not a real computer person you may sure. need some instruction and it's available here in the library come on in oh I like working here because of the people I mean, they're so nice and so polite and so sweet to deal with, and you get a chance to really talk to them and help them. Um, I can't think of any place. Well, I was here for several years, and then I left for a year, and we came back, and the thing I missed the most was working at the library. It's, it's fun. Uh, I like the people that I work with, the other volunteers here, and so on, and we get a chance to meet other people. Lots of other people, of course. And so, how long have you worked here? Five years now. Five mm -hmm. years. Well, what, what's a typical day for you? What do you do? Typical day is I come in about 9 o'clock and open up in the back and uh, so that the workers can come in later and I get the computers turned on and all the little odds and ends that need to be done to run the library done before we open at 10. So you're saying new people come in, uh, what, are they, what are the newer folks more interested in? Well actually the new people come in and we get them entered in the computer and then we have one of the people working on the shift or myself if it's not too busy, uh, give them a tour of the library, show them where everything is. Um, you know they're very surprised when they find out we have DVDs and C books on CD and books on tape. and. A nice, a really nice, a large print section. That's a big, big thing. Um, they enjoy all of it, and a lot come in to do the puzzles. There, there. Uh, we have one couple who he comes in with his wife, and he sits over here and reads the Wall Street Journal every day while his wife works on puzzles. Am I to understand that you are also a food bank? We do have a large. Um, I don't know what you're in cabinet or looks like a hope chest almost that you could come in and put food in for South County Outreach. And you can bring other things too. You can bring toys that maybe your grandkids don't use anymore or books that they don't use. Uh, we try to put in a couple of puzzles every week and uh, you know if we're getting taken movies off of our uh, shelf that we're not going to be using anymore that are appropriate for children, we'll put those in especially VHS tapes because old VHS tapes are not very well used in the library but when we give them to South County Outreach the moms who are living in motels with their children they still have VHS tape VCR recorders there so yeah if you have old VHS tapes we'll take them for 
South County Outreach usually. So. Well, that's good to know because yeah. a lot of people wouldn't know what to do with them. So that's for a good cause. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good thing. Well, is there anything else that you'd like us to know about this wonderful library? Well, we have paperbacks, thousands of them, and they go out on your honor. You don't have any due dates on them. The other things that we don't have due dates on are puzzles, jigsaw puzzles. You take them out on your honor, bring them back when you're through. We have a huge music CD collection, and those also go out on your honor. So a lot of people come in, they'll take 10 music CDs home with them, download them onto their computer, bring them back the next day. And I know a couple of people really go through all the genres and start studying because they're really music freaks, <laughs> but they enjoy that. And then the last thing that we have is we have a small foreign language book book section and you take those out on your honor. There's a pretty big Korean section, a fair sized Chinese section with some movies, both in Korean and Chinese, Japanese, we have a little bit of Spanish, we have we newly have a Hebrew section. The Hebrew Club donated that to us, so we have several books in Hebrew for people if you still read Hebrew, which quite a few of our residents do. I'm surprised at that, but many do. Wow, that's really interesting to know. Well, I, I cannot thank you enough. I mean, I've learned so much just by being here in this conversation with you, Pat, so I can imagine that people are, that come in here for the first time or haven't been in in a while are going to be just stunned to see all the amazing things that they can take advantage of by coming into the library, and your wonderful staff is here to help everybody. So thank you so much for your time today. We really, really appreciate you speaking with us. The best library anywhere around. I agree. <laughs> thank you, Thank Pat. you, Cindy. I enjoyed, enjoyed it. Studies show that libraries are important to older people to develop four key literacies. Financial literacy to understand banking and investments as well as recognizing and protecting against fraud. Technology literacy because new technology moves at such a fast pace to ever widen the digital divide. Community service literacy to assist in understanding community functions and to participate in decision-making structures. Health literacy includes skills to process and understand basic information needed to make appropriate health decisions. The History Center provides a sense of place that helps residents feel part of this unique community. It also helps us understand the Founders' original vision and promotes discussion and prioritization of future issues of housing, transportation, landscaping, and community amenities. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope that you learned something about the library and the History Center. Please watch us on Channel 6 and also on YouTube. Join us every time on Discovering Laguna Woods Village. I better get comfortable. This is going to take a while.